Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome an entrepreneur who, with the help of her sister, decided to do things their own way by self-publishing. What is self-publishing? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? Self-publishing of a writer is publishing a piece of one's work independently and at one's own expense. Publishing is the occupation, business, or activity of preparing and issuing books, journals, or other material for sale. Publishing means making information available to the public. For example, I self-publish blog posts on the Shades of E website. Additionally, I am writing an ebook titled The Starting Line, How to Start a Business. Again, I am self-publishing. An example given, I am writing, editing, and releasing it to the public eventually for consumption by myself without the help of any larger publication. Self-publishing covers all aspects of the books, writing, editing, proofreading, formatting, cover design, printing, every part of the publishing process is up to the self-publisher. But why is this important? First, let's start out by how difficult it is to get published in the first place. Most publishers do not allow unsolicited manuscripts, so even if you are the writer of the actual Bible, you still need to know someone that knows someone. Larger publication companies are sifting through thousands of novels per week, so the likelihood of publication companies seeking out a new talent isn't very high. Additionally, those large publications, while shifting through those endless pages of tales of Fabio's hair glistening like the morning sun first hitting the field of grain, setting fire to the earth's surface and my soul. Okay, enough of that. Being a self-publishing author allows the ability to have total control over intellectual property. Intellectual property is the work or invention that is the result of creativity, such as a manuscript, to which one has the right for which one may apply for a patent, copyright, trademark, etc. That means the entrepreneur has the ability to change and edit at will. No more requests from editors demanding changes for marketing purposes, which has been a source of frustration in the past. However, with great power comes great responsibility. In addition to having total creative control, a self-publisher also receives higher royalty rates. In general, royalty rates are between 7% and 25%. For self-publishing independent authors, royalty rates are closer to 70%. That is almost a 50% difference between the two. This is not to say that being published does not have its own perks, salary, book tours, interviews, marketing guidance, etc., but expect some time between finishing a book and actual publication. The time it takes to complete a self-published book and have it available for digital downloads or print on demand is less than a day. You can write a blog right now, post it online in a few hours. Again, this includes writing, editing, formatting, etc., and have it available for readers. Listen, everyone starts from somewhere. I say that all the time. And I get it. Some individuals start the race a little closer to the starting line for a variety of reasons. But at the end of the day, nobody becomes New York Times bestselling author overnight without writing a few pieces first. Self-publishing is an opportunity to get the work out in the public eye. It helps engage and grow a fan base. And that is why the entrepreneur should care. Exploring self-publication can help build an opportunity to make a name for oneself. Have you ever heard of Rich Dad, Poor Dad? No. What about Fifty Shades of Grey? Each one is a self-published book. Don't know where to start? Start writing a blog. From there, add those blogs to a new ledger and build an email list while showcasing to potential customers and publishers those writing skills. From there, take those blogs and mash them up into a book. And maybe call the book The Starting Line, How to Start a Business, and release the book to Patreon members who support an entrepreneurial podcast, maybe. Just spit balling ideas here, people. Which reminds me, subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter by visiting the Shades of E and get a copy of the ebook, The Starting Line, How to Start a Business Upon Release by Becoming a Patreon Member of the Show. As one guest once said, builders build, and for some, writers write. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Add value to the reader. Create content that is truthful, accurate, and free of generalization. Or do as a j Books is doing, helping you stay creative calm and organize. Time to get creative entrepreneurs. Thank you and hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. All 
I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This is a women's own small business ran by two sisters and moms of boys. They design scissor activity books, journals, and planners for families that have creative outlet at home or on the go. Please welcome A and J Books. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with the owner of A&J Books, Jesse Russo. How are we doing? Hey, I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm excited because we've connected on Instagram. We've been kind of chatting. I've been following a lot of what you're doing. I absolutely love your videos, which we're going to get into in a minute. But first, let's introduce the world to Jesse. Give the, give the audience a little introduction. Um, I am a mom to a 10-year-old boy. I'm happily married. I was in Los Angeles. I left in 2020 and moved to um, o- Oceanside, California. And originally, I'm a Cali girl. I'm a straight valley girl all the way. So um, I run this business with my sister, who is in Portland. And, and um, yeah, she's been in Portland, I I feel like eight years now, maybe. Um, she loves living there. It's an awesome um, town. We love visiting. Obviously, we take turns going back and forth. And she has a five-year-old son. So we're boy moms and business partners and sisters. I love it. You know, Oceanside, California has a special place in my heart because in truth, I think that might be where my third uh, the the three-year-old was conceived to be honest with you. <laughs> so, those dang nice. weddings i'm telling you <laughs> all the beach makes love happen <laughs> man it's it's gorgeous that whole that whole section of california is just um, unbelievable honestly so let's talk nice. about a and j brooks what what is it give the audience a little background and kind of tell us how it started yeah so a and j i am jesse and my sister's alex so alex and jesse books. We design journals, planners, dot journals, um, and kids activity books and kids journals. Um, it got birthed, um, actually today is our birthday, our one year birthday of when we kind of launched. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's a, um, we did our first Instagram post on August 1st of last year, 2021. I kind of was you know, reading up about self-publishing. I was, I come from the restaurant industry, so completely different self-publishing is opposite ends. I knew nothing about it. And I just was learning a lot. I, I'm, I love to learn. I love listening to different things. Um, uh, nutrition and health are also things that my sister and I are very into. So I spent a lot of my pandemic time, like just learning about nutrition and kind of like Every free webinar I could touch, I was on, and I just loved absorbing it like a sponge. I also am an avid reader. I love reading. I think reading gives you perspectives. And so I just was talking to my sister, and I was like, hey, I think I'm going to start publishing these low-content books. And she said, oh, I would love to be a part of that with you. And I went, sure, let's go for it. And, like, we just, like, literally within two weeks – started making books. Like uh, my sister has an amazing design eye and very creative. Um, She was struggling, you know, this had been a year into the pandemic now. So she was struggling with her five-year-old at home of like keeping him busy, you know, the books that were available for kids at that time for her were very repetitive and he seemed bored. They didn't like engage him enough. And we try to be very sustainable. And so this this publishing was print to order. And so we really liked that aspect. It wasn't like keeping a big garage full of inventory. Um, It was all being shipped and done for us. We just had to market and we had to come up with great designs. And um, my side of my son was being, is a little older. And what was hard and a struggle for us doing homeschool was writing. My son did a whole year of cursive writing, which is very interesting because they type so much in school. (laughs) Um, But every day he had to write and he was kind of struggling. He loves to read as well. And he's struggling to get his thoughts onto the paper. And so that's where it was like, 
these parent needs, these voids that needed to be filled. And so we're like, yeah, let's go for it. And journaling, we lost our dad five years ago. So journaling helped us get through our process of grief and kind of all the highs and lows of the feelings that you have and the emotions that you have, you know, journaling is like a great brain dump or a creative expression, you know, um, a lot of other countries do dot journaling and like these cool trackers and pages and just kind of use it as a therapy in a sense to, to be creative and spend some time just kind of learning about yourself. And so we were like, let's, you know, journaling isn't a glorified diary. It can be so many other therapeutic things. And it was a stressful time the last two years that we've been in. So um, it was like, how do we release some of these emotions? So there you go. A and J books started. <laughs> That's actually quite incredible because um, I, I don't think, I think people don't really think about self-publishing as an option really. Now you mentioned you were kind of working with a company that it's, it's kind of um, you, you, basically pay and they'll, they'll create the publication for you. How did you kind of find this information and why books? Why did you decide to go with books? Um, I'm all about passive income. And once you create the work, it stays forever. Right. So like books made sense to me because there will always be a five-year-old that needs to learn how to work on its fine motor skills of scissors and coloring and a adult will always need to journal. Right. And I'm a, I love to plan. I'm a hardcore planner and I love checking the boxes off the list. So, you know, it was like, Oh, how nice to put it all together. Right. It's like our planner is a giant calendar. And then in between each month is um, lined pages. So you can focus on, I love tracking my habits, looking back on each month. I'm like, Oh, was that a real goal? Like realistic goal to hit? Or was that totally out of the loop? I could not achieve that in this month. So maybe I should try again. Maybe I did better than I thought I did. Like, wow. Okay. I did exercise the amount of times that I wanted to, or something as simple as like drinking enough water in the summertime. Right. Wow. So I know that we have lots of fancy tools that do that on our phone too, and apps and whatnot, but I love you know, there's something special about writing and like how it sinks into your brain and how you can actually compute it and learn again about yourself. You know, lots of things come up and you don't ever really wonder why or where those are seeded from. I've been working on boundaries. I've been working on so many different things through this pandemic and journaling just helped a lot. So books were, hey, if this could do that for me, why wouldn't I want to create a business that would also help others and that would be needed for lifetime, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned too, the books are very active and engaging for the kids. You mentioned, you know, teaching them how to cut with scissors. I actually have one of the books for my child. It's very, very useful. Why was it kind of important? And, and, you know, how do you guys come up with these ideas to, you know, really create an activity book, right? It, it really is very much an activity book, it seems like. Yeah, we, um, we, do it as a family. We keep our kids engaged, right? We practice and test pages. Um, We think of general topics. Like we don't ever want to just be that company that's making a unicorn book because unicorns are popular, right? Like we want to make sure that we're kind of encompassing all the special parts about this world that we live in. So the, the themes come from camping, Um, Our next book is launching actually this month and it's in honor of our birthday and it's a birthday book because we all have a birthday, right? And so what are the fun things that you do at a birthday party? Oh, you build balloons, you hit a pinata, like you think of those fun memories that you have and you put that into drawings into a book. So all the drawings, everything we, it's ours, all of our original content. So you guys, all original content, you guys are self-publishing. How do you market this? How do you get it out to the masses? Great question. As business owners, we don't know. We just <laughs> drive. We just, we just wing um, it. <laughs> I would say that was, um, that's probably one of our h- hardest things at the moment. You know, it's like um, you have all these ideas and it's, as a business owner, you, you can't just execute the ideas and create great images and books. You have to um, learn how to be a content creator and all these different platforms. We have access to these great platforms, right? Like, for a business and marketing wise, um, Pinterest is fantastic um, because it's search engine optimizing, right? And it's like actually going to tie in. We originally d- weren't going to make a website and we decided, oh, okay, I guess we're ma- making a website and like <laughs> how you choose to funnel traffic. And then we have this beautiful website, but how do people know that it exists, you know? So you're learning constantly on the go and you're being okay with like, it's, great when you get a win and you have a result, but then you have to also be okay with like, well, 
I didn't know this a year ago. I didn't know this six months ago. So I have to be okay and like learn to not be super hard on myself, but keep progressing every single day in the right direction. So we market, we use Instagram, honestly, and we've had some hard moments with our mental health and like, <laughs> like, what are we doing wrong? Or, uh, questioning, like, is our design not good? Is it us? Is it, how do you even learn? It's just learning a different beast really um, is the best way to put it um, because it changes, right? Like, so Instagram changes all the time. Pinterest is having a giant change actually today. So like all these platforms, yes, you have access to them, which maybe businesses didn't have access to on this level 10 years ago. So it's a tool and you got to be patient. You got to be willing to just take the time, take classes, um, read about it. Good old YouTube university. Like, thank goodness other people put stuff on YouTube because they're going through it. And it's kind of like your podcast and how you're creating um, relationships with people. And you get to share that because a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs, but you need to have a little bit of guidance and um, mentorship and help and kind of along the way, you know, yeah, I completely agree, you know, and, and to your point, YouTube university, thank you, the professors for YouTube. This podcast would not have, this podcast is brought to you by <laughs> YouTube university. Oh, those it's, angel books. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. And to your point too, the amount of information you can get, find in a book, ladies and gentlemen, I just got to tell you folks are listening. Anything you can possibly learn about in life is actually written in a book right now. Uh, in fact, when we learn more things in life, we also write them in books and we get those published and they come out and sign, you know, research novel and a lot of different variations of, of publications. And so reading really does do quite a bit. Now, now with that said, you're going through this process, you're reading books, you're taking YouTube University, you're trying to learn how to market what was hard about starting this? Like you, you're mentioning, you guys like a, you're a big learning process. What was those learning moments for you? Um, there's so many. I mean, you look back at a month and go, "Wow, that, that really worked, right?" And I think any business you have to do this. You have to go, "What worked and what didn't?" And it not be emotionally attached to it, right? Like because sometimes we're like, "Man, we really wish that did work," or "I like that," and you have to go, "You know what? That's just not working." And that's like. How do we prioritize? Where is the best use of our time? It is just me and my sister. Um, the hard part is we have all these ideas and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going in there and they're keeping you up at night. And you're like, how do I execute them? Just being two people who are also moms and trying to live life and have this balance. And it's hard to have a balance and there's not really a real balance in life, but sometimes you're full force and you can see some great results and sometimes you don't. And you have to be okay with that. And, you know, we look back now and we're like, wow, in a year, we have, you know, learned so much um, of like being visual learners in our creative process and what's like effective and what's not. And as entrepreneurs, we are now starting to publish on another platform. So we're kind of starting all over again. And we're like, okay, this platform's completely different than the other platform, but it's going to hopefully lily pad us into a wholesale market with other distribution. So that's kind of like our vision for five years, you know, I think entrepreneurs, you have to really think big and then kind of work backwards a little bit and be willing to like, nope, that didn't work. This didn't work. And you just keep going. You know, you, one of the things you mentioned as well is kind of going back to the education piece, trying to learn more. Um, I, I think, you know, hopefully folks that are listening, utilize this podcast as an oppor educational opportunity, right? Because I think you're learning from a lot of great entrepreneurs, but Jesse, for you, how important is, you know, going back and just filling in the voids of areas that maybe you're not an expertise in? Oh, constant. And then you kind of question too, who are you learning from, right? So yes, we have YouTube, but how do we know if their way is a relevant way, right? Um, Very true. Like I can get a lot of information from authors, but my books are not, you know, I'm not writing a book. I'm not writing a children's book. So like the way they market a children's book um, is completely different than what I would be doing as a low content book. So you have to just be willing to, you know, learn, like really humble yourself. And I, I actually think it's great because as an adult, unless you're in college, you don't get a lot of opportunities to learn. Um, I think the regular workforce, they don't, they don't sew into you on that level. It's like always, um, it's great to have like these kind of learning moments. And I think that you need them as an adult. It just kind of stimulates your brain in another way. And then it helps us be creative at the same time. So um, education is incredibly important to your entrepreneur process. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. In fact, you use this, you use this phrase a few times and I just want to, I want to hear what your definition of 
What is a low content book? Oh, great question. Um, basically, so there's no content books, which would be like blank pages, like a blank kind of like a drawing journal, okay, right? Okay. Um, or lined pages, which is repetition, the same image on the page re- repeated throughout the book. So if it's 100 pages, it's all lined pages, right? Um, a low content book would be mixed pages, like our kids scissor book is every page has a different activity on it. Um, so like we have coloring, we have cutting, we have built, you know, our dinosaur book, you can build a two foot dinosaur, all of them have builds in them. And we encourage parents to laminate them so the kids can continue to play with them and put Velcro on them or put little, um, those little brads on there, you know, and you can kind of like continue not just make a bunch of trash and cut it out and you're done with it. It's like, no, get out that box that some something got delivered in, make it the background, put your dinosaurs on there. Like you let your kid create a scene and like do all these fun extra things. And that's what we tried to encourage parents that feel stuck. You know, if you need some time to go cook dinner or just to decompress, our books will help keep your kids busy, but learning at the same time. Yeah. And I, I, again, I can attest to this. Then the the material uh, is very thick, really strong material. So to, to your point, you know, I, I didn't think about it, but laminating it is be a great idea for reuse. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's really good, strong material. Now, how did your team go about, you know, finding the right vendor to work with, to publish, to help publish your book? Um, well, we just went with what we knew at the moment, which was accessible and actually free. So, um, but it's in the process of changing. So then you will start paying um, upload per book that you're uploading. Um, you know, we also want to copyright our stuff because it's original images and we want to make sure that other people aren't stealing anything. And, um, so that was like a whole new thing being an entrepreneur that I didn't really have to ever face. Um, also, um, you know, moving forward to other books and other designs, like maybe we'll have a two part series. So like you start, you kind of have to think like, Oh, well this dinosaur, is uh, skateboarding on this kid's journal. Well, how can we take that guy and kind of maybe build a story with him? Maybe we will eventually write a kid's book with that little dinosaur. We've actually turned that dinosaur into a sticker. We're in the process of taking our images from our books and kind of turning them into stickers because we thought those were way like better opportunities to have a business card with, as a sticker rather than passing out a business card anymore and like um, making it fun and engaging and um, having it fun. We, we are in six local stores in Portland. And so we thought, how cool would it be to eventually be like, go collect A and J book stickers from each oh, store. Like smart. this one has eagle, has a dinosaur and like really gets the kids kind of excited for future books and other images. Awesome. I, I gotta say, I'm already at one. I, I'm, I'm looking over to my left shoulder right now and I can see the red dinosaur sticker right now on the skateboard. Oh, yes. I got that baby. I, I oh, got one yes. of eight already. I'm halfway there. Now, what would you say has been easy about starting a business? Has there been anything easy? Um, the easy part is, you know, the relationship with my my sister and I, um, we were not super close prior. Um, we're seven years apart in age. Um, so becoming mothers brought us closer together, but then also being business partners has actually really helped us too. Like, you know, when to pick your battles, right? Like in certain relationships, you're like, it's easy to, Hey, sure. You want to run with this idea, run with it, go for it. Like, you know, I think there's, um, a, a great bond that's happening. Sometimes people are a little, you know, skeptical to be in a business relationship with a family member. And for me, I will say that that's been definitely the easiest part. Um, I, I asked her to, and let's see, she said the easiest part was, uh, I don't know. I don't see her part. Yeah. The I easiest think, part was you making know, you come on the podcast so she didn't have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely, I am the networker. I'm the build the relationships and talk to people person. Um, and that's why we make a good team. I love uh, it. She's the designer. She has the great visual eye of like colors and things that I just don't even compute. My, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So we make a good team. How, how did you that's guys uh, decide to finance this venture? Is it grassroots effort? Did you guys get venture capital or just? No, we did it. Um, that good old stimulus money, you just put it to use in a, a better area than like shopping for clothes or I don't know, weird things. Like, you know, I think once you're an entrepreneur, you're always looking at like how to make your dollar kind of stretch and yeah. like what to do with your dollar, you know? And so um, we ran a few ads. Um, so we've lost money on ads because we're learning that and we don't really understand it. But yeah. 
you know, we have been generating money every month. We, we've sold, you know, like I said, we're in six stores wholesale. We're going to do two, um, two holiday expos this year, which we've never done. So that will be completely new for us too. And that's actually a lot financial, like that's a huge decision. And when we decided to do this business, it was because we didn't have to go and um, because it was like being shipped and print to order. And it was like this yeah. convenience factor. Yep. And now we're, you know, we're like, well, we've kind of grown to this and like, it's going to be Christmas time and we got to go sell these books on this another level. So I will be in Portland at all the fairs this Christmas. <laughs> I, will, I will make sure to stop by and say hello. I can't <laughs> wait. That'll be awesome. Now, what, what continues to motivate you? Um, I think the ideas, I think the ideas help you kind of want to kind of keep digging in and learning and kind of stay up till 10 o'clock doing on this extra stuff that you're doing, you know, and reading and learning and finding groups and connecting with other people. Um, it's been really great, like to meet people off of Instagram and form these little relationships that we can support each other's causes. Like we're completely different businesses, but we can support you. Very and if true. it's as simple as leaving a comment or a little heart, I will support a small business owner because you're grinding and you're trying your best, you know? And so I think the ideas keep us super motivated. Like, Ooh, what about, we have like probably 50 more themes of scissor books that we want to do. Um, and like, and some written books that we would like to tie in also. Um, it's just kind of being that visionary is what keeps you creative. And then when people send you, when you get a message from somebody that is using your book, like, oh, my six-year-old has been journaling in their journal and they love it and they've really worked through some, their parents were getting divorced or these certain stories that kids that you get and it just warms your heart because you're like, maybe I'll stop posting on Instagram as an entrepreneur, right? You go down in your mind and you think, oh, I'm going to take a break. And then you get this note or this letter from somebody who's super nice and great and tells you how much their book has helped them. And so then you're like, yes, I'm ready to rev it back up. I'm right back in this game. That's all I needed was just that little kind of high five. Man, you know, you said a few things there. One, folks at home that are listening, it, thank, for, thank you so much for going and like our Instagram photos when we post it. But when you engage with us in the comment section and you like say some, that hits the soft part for me personally. I, I really do enjoy it. So thank you for, so much for doing that for us. Uh, I really do like it. Now, one of the things you kind of also mentioned um, in, in regards to the Instagram world was networking, the importance of networking. How important has networking been for your organization or for your brand? Oh, huge, huge. We've met other moms that are sisters in business um, that, you know, influencers, not influencers have boutique shops, also write other books. So it's kind of been funny how we meet these other relationships and we're like, hey, they're sisters too. And we're sisters. <laughs> and like, it, so of course we're going to support them and like, or they're writing great kids books, you know, um, kids need to read constantly. It's part of their development. And so if somebody wrote a book, you want to support them if it's uh, aligns with what you're doing in your family. Very, very true. Very true. Now, wh what about self doubt? Have you ever had a moment of self doubt as you guys been going through this process? Yes, I would say daily, but I've been an entrepreneur prior to this business too. And I've, like I said, done a lot of reading. So um, it's not daily anymore. It's definitely <laughs> weekly now instead. Like, you know, you question, am I doing the right thing? Because there is no validation. There is no idea if hashtags still work on Instagram or if you're, you know, making the right choice or the size of your photo needs to change or the lighting needs to change. Or, you know, right now we're we're buying ISBNs for our books and giving them barcodes, but then we're like, oh, well, is that going to mess up where they're being published on the other platform? So we're constant and there's no one to talk to. There's no one yeah. to validate your questions. You just got to be willing to kind of put it out there, especially, you know, building a website from scratch and not really never knowing that stuff. It's not just making it pretty and visually it's tying in those SEOs and then you got to wait. You got to sit patiently. And most of the time entrepreneurs don't have the patience to nope, wait for the 90 day. So we're like 90 days, what? <laughs> like so much to change by then. <laughs> so yes, there is always doubt, but you just kind of got to, you know, get in. What's the, what's the reason why you started this business that you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing, just remind yourself. And that keeps you grounded. That's why it's like pillars, right? You got to have a mission statement or pillars and you got to like, just know your values. Like, why did we create these books? Yeah. And if something's making us get off path, we just pull our, we go, okay, that's it. We're getting right back onto path and we're kind of spiraling. Let's pull it in. 
let's rethink, let's take a break if we need to take two days off or whatever and get out in nature. Like that helps my sister and I really kind of clear the fog or the haze that might be happening in the brain. Nice. Now as a business owner right now with A and J books, what keeps you up at night? How will we get it all done? (laughs) There's not enough hours in the day. (laughs) No, there's just not. I mean, Christmas is right around the corner and people are already buying stuff to put in their stores because shipping's behind. And so that Christmas in July is real. And uh, (laughs) we're like, oh my gosh, we wanted all these things done to be like, you know, when you say from Christmas last year, where will you be next year? And you're like, oh man, like how did... And, and it's not that you got sidetracked because you've always been grinding and doing something. It's just that you got to learn how to prioritize. Like, is that something I need to do right now? Or can that wait? Yeah. There will always, they will all be important things as a business owner. You'll have all these different things that come at you. Um, but what do you need to do right now? And then you conquer it and you do it and then you'll be better. You know, I like it. Where, where's A and J books going to be in five years? Oh man, we're hoping to, be traveling with our children in an RV because people it. are using our books and we get to like, just be a creative on a whole nother level. We're hoping we're actually designing a canvas tote for our ex holiday expos. Um, you know, kind of making it encompass, um, a whole brand really like, you know, using that sticker, that same little character and maybe putting him in a book and putting him on a shirt, putting him in a bag, putting him on a hat. Who Put knows? Put him in a it's movie. A little- I'm seeing movie. I'm, let me know if you need a voiceover. <laughs> oh, sweet. <Yes. laughs> so, you know, a and Books, we'd love to be in a lot more stores. Um, and we just would love to have more sales because parenting is hard too. And so yeah. that's why our books, we try to be helpful. You know, we want, um, sometimes you just need a break. Yeah. And your kids need you. So these books... Plus, they're, you know, my son is 10 now, so I still want him to journal as an adult. You know, you hope you're instilling habits in him to prepare him for adulthood. And that's what you do as a parent. You're trying to just give your kid tools, but teach them and walk them through it at the same time. Yeah. Now, what advice do you have for the listeners? Oh, ask any person you know. Um, don't be scared to ask on social media and reach out to a stranger. Like, it's it's going to be fine. Actually, every time we asked, um, the response was great. So, um, people like, yeah, sure. We'll share for May. We did mental health, a lot of mental health awareness because that ties in with journaling. And so, yeah, we asked people like, Hey, it's part of your brand and what you're doing. Also, do you mind sharing our content? And people would do it. And this month is self-care month. And again, it applies to journaling. And so you just feel, form those relationships and, you know, then it's endless. Just don't be scared to talk about what's in your heart and for your business. I love it. I love it. Now for the listeners at home, where can they find a and books? Where is your stores located? Where, how can they get some books? Yes. So in Portland, we are in black wagon. We are in holy moly. I'm not going to remember all of the stores tour in Washington. So it's a little farther, but, um, which is kazoodles and we're in hammer and jacks. So some really great stores, um, Sunshine Books, follow her on Instagram. She goes yes. around the town um, reading to kids. She has some of our books, so she's fantastic. And we are partnered with the Cran Shop. She makes homemade crayons. Oh, nice. Um, and she's in Washington. And a- our um, anjbooks.shop is our website. We have a TikTok, we have Pinterest, and we have Instagram. They're all different, um, but I will give you our Instagram, we use social media to give you how to's, how to journal, how to draw, how to do your planner, how to use your kids' books and ideas, or even journal prompts for your kids to use. So um, our Instagram handle is at A underscore and A N D underscore J books. But our website is probably the easiest place to go because then you can follow us on every other platform that you choose to that you use, whether if you're an Instagram user or a TikTok user. Um, so yeah, a and J books, uh, dot shop. Perfect. And again, folks subscribe to the shades of entrepreneurship newsletter and a and J information will be on the newsletter for three weeks, a week before the episode airs a week, the episode airs and a week after. So again, please subscribe to the shades of entrepreneurship. Show your support to these small businesses by engaging with them on their Instagram feeds. But not only that, please feel free to leave a comment. We love nice comments. We love nice reviews. 
leave the haterism at home, please. We don't want those comments. We want we want to feel good about what we're doing because it is a lot of work. And, and I think you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs are you know putting a lot of effort in, so they they love to hear when their effort is paying off. Jess, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your time. I thank you for our relationship that we've been forming. I look forward to meeting you in person. Oh, Oh, can I also share? Yes, please. Um, We have some free printouts on, we have free PDF. Um, We have like eight pages on our website. So feel free to download those on our website and have some fun with your kids before they go back to school. Yes. And I'm telling you folks, it's really good material. Try if you're going to print them at home, make sure you get a nice thick board. So when you're doing the cutout stuff, I really do like the laminating example. I think that's a really cool idea, but really do. It really engages your kids. So again, Jesse, thank you so much for being on the show. I really do appreciate it. I'm excited to see you here in the Christmas time. I'm definitely going to come check you out, introduce yeah. you to the fam, get some more no. books. We can never have too many books, right? Yes. No. Oh, never. <laughs> so, thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course. So everybody listening at home, please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and all those social media sites. And don't forget to sign the uh, newsletter. Thank you. And have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.